Hello everyone, Professor Kagan here. This is a sequel to my Have You Seen This OS video that I created back in October 2019. The purpose of this video is to talk about what this operating system was meant to be, what it could have been, and to just kind of go over the history, or at least as much of it as I could find, of it. On March 16th, 2002, a post on Slashdot.org went live concerning a brand new operating system based on FreeBSD titled Lane OS. The first post contains a quote from the main developer Chris Gilbert, also known as the uh, neo evangelist and I will refer to him as such from here on. He wrote that this Thursday, a new BSD OS project went online which is entitled Lane OS. Lane OS is for the most part a heavily recoded version of FreeBSD 4.5 made to eventually resemble Lane's Nave from the anime Serial Experiments Lane. It sports an animated splash screen, a more fully integrated X server, and a custom graphical login interface, among several other improvements over FreeBSD and Linux. You can check the homepage out at laneos.org. Commenters were skeptical, as only a theme had been available at the time, doubting that anything will come of what had been, for all intents and purposes, just a theme. Going so far as to doubt the author's programming ability and questioning how it even made it to the front page of this website in the first place. Others did seem to be willing to wait and see what could come of it. Some months later, on the Ars Technica forums, we have a user named Tin Milk talking a bit more about what the project is aiming to accomplish. Things such as a custom user interface, like the Lord's Serial Experiments Lane, uh, voice recognition for passwords, and uh, the interface like in Lane, of course, and uh, integrating X into the kernel of FreeBSD, as well as other unspecified improvements. Now, I'm honestly not quite sure what X is. As far as I can tell from research, it could be the X Windows system. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. This is a open source graphical user interface that supports FreeBSD and can be customized. Uh, at this point, we've got a working build of this OS shown in the screenshot here, uh, Build 1.0. Uh, to be frank, it really does seem to be nothing more than a simple uh, theme for FreeBSD, but we do know there's some sort of custom code running shown here in the eTerm window. And to provide a little more clarity on the lead dev's ability, I did do some digging around and found that he contributed to a program called GS Kit, which provided a C interface to the PlayStation 2's graphics synthesizer, or its uh, graphics chip. The project received commits on GitHub up to 2016 by several different contributors, but the purpose of this is to outline the potential capability and knowledge of Neovangelist. The project carried on from 2002 to 2005 with status updates littering the site. There's talk of uh, developer conferences with links to them, but these links are dead and no longer lead anywhere. They did seem to be making some sort of progress, however. In later entries, they talk about what they call the Schumann Core, the name coming from the concept of Schumann Resonance. And if you're a fan of Lane, you should know what this is, but if you don't... Uh, to summarize it briefly, it's the concept of Earth's natural frequency resonating with the frequency of the human mind. This is considered a path to global consciousness, uh, sort of a blending of worlds, the internet slash wired, uh, and the real world. This is a large concept in Serial Experiments Lane, and, but I'm digressing at this point. Uh, this core is simply named in reference to the concept of Schumann Resonance, and its only purpose is to manage application networking. Why they decided to write a program for this instead of using one of the programs they mentioned in the post is uh, something I can't fathom. I had more work, I guess. Um, now that we've discussed what the operating system aims to do, or rather what it was and what the lead developer can do, Let's discuss what has happened since these first couple years of the project's history. The last update given was on February 15, 2005, and a little had gone on since then. A thread did pop up on Erisu, or Alice Chan, 
in 2017, users there kicked around the possibility of reviving the project. Uh, one guy, known as Deckard, linked a website he hosted that contained recently created builds and ISOs from 2016. Unfortunately, the link is, again, dead. But Deckard did leave us an image listing possible ideas that users could contribute to a possible operating system. It would be built off Gen 2, one of many, many, many Linux distributions, and it would mimic Lane's Navi, or more specifically, Copeland OS, as it uh, operated and appeared in the show. In usual fashion, in a subculture such as this, the idea of including network security tools, be they white, black, or gray hat related, was also thrown in alongside user-created programs from the site itself. This is the last we've seen of anything related to the project that I can currently find until June 22nd, 2020. Not even a year after I made my video on the project. For the last month, I'd been sniffing around trying to see if I could get anything, any information at all, about the project. Screenshots, the main devs, other projects. I even found a thread on a website called Mini Tokyo that had a user who claimed to be the Neovangelist's girlfriend posting in it, if you can believe it. I thought this was a really cool project and I had to find everything I could about it. So sometimes the best way to get new information is to start back at the beginning. When I decided to do a sequel to my video, I visited the original site again and saw that it had actually been updated on this day, June 22nd, 2020, uh, by a new developer by the name of Kenshin Info. And he posted, Hello, welcome to the newest attempt at Lane OS. My name is Kenshin Info. I found out about this project a while ago, and I have decided to at least attempt to revamp this project. Not sure how well it will go and all. However, we will have to see. In the meantime, there will be some small updates to the website while I work on fixing the Lane WN, or Lane Window Manager. Be sure to check back in the future to see the process. Cheers, Kenshin Info. At this point, months had gone by with no update, but in November, Kenshin Info left us with this post. Hello everyone, I hope you're all staying safe in these rough times, and had a good Thanksgiving if you celebrate it. This is just an update letting you know that the current plans for the future of the project. Lane Windows Manager is a disaster and probably needs to be remade from scratch. Either that, or make it a theme for either Openbox, Fluxbox, or Zomnad. If you have any thoughts on the matter, please email me at kenshininfo at laneos.org. I am also going to work on setting up a mailing list for updates for the project. In any case, I hope you have a wonderful day. Cheers, Genshin Info. At this point, I was more curious about Lane's window manager issues than an operating system or a potential theme for a window manager. I wanted to know what was wrong with the program itself. And on the off chance of getting a reply, since, you know, this had been around half a year, since his last post on uh, Lane.org, I emailed him to ask some questions about the project. He actually got back to me later that day and was very kind in his replies. So let's walk through them one by one. Question 1. The site's disclaimer says that images containing Lane are used for permission from the copyright holder. Do you know anything about this? The disclaimers were just left over from the original site and I didn't get around to rebuilding the website. I was hoping he'd know the original devs, how they got permission from Pioneer, but that's fine. Uh, I do plan on looking further into that in the future. We don't necessarily need to know now, but I really want to know that. Uh, question two. Your last posted update stated that Lane Windows Manager is a disaster. What was wrong with it exactly? His response? So the Lane Window Manager is really all that was made from the project. From what I looked at and understood, the code is just poorly made, buggy, slow, and crashes constantly. I did say previously that Neovangelist was the main dev, but he wasn't the only dev. However, he's the only one I could find in any real sense across the internet. I even managed to find an account belonging to, at least at the time, girlfriend. 
as the comp as a comp sci miner myself, I understand all too well what poorly organized code riddled with bugs is like to work with. It's amazing that I'm alive, to be honest. <laughs> um, they did talk a rather large game on the website, though, and I I've seen projects like this often nowadays where a big game is talked and they've either had to walk it back or abandon it entirely. Uh, it's a shame this is one of them. Uh, really, it is, because I adore fan projects like this. Question 3. Are you still thinking about merely making a theme, or is an operating system, even a Linux distro, still in the cards? His response? So the original scope of the project was to make a full-blown operating system with a custom kernel. Very ambitious for such a small group of people. The Windows Manager is originally made for BSD operating systems. However, the current state is that I made it work for Linux. I only tested it on Arch thus far. I am unsure if I have the time to really keep up with the project, been having too many issues with it. So Kenshin Info was able to port the program from BSD to Arch Linux, which is another distro, uh, like those users from Arisu-chan had discussed doing themselves. And he is right, these tasks are incredibly large for a small group of people to accomplish. From what I had seen on Slashdot.org, only two people had been actively coding in the project. And for their goals, that's extremely lofty for two people to accomplish. It's really sad to see what could be a really cool project languish over the course of almost two decades. And to my knowledge, it's the only time anyone has ever tried replicating Copeland OS to this length. It also pains me that so much has been lost over these 20 years, information that people such as myself may want to see, if at the very least to learn what not to do when creating an operating system based on some thing from a show you like. Uh, this isn't the end, though. Oh no, I've still got the original 1.3 release of Lane Window Manager, and I'm still trying to get that working as well as searching for any more details that I can. I really want to have a poke around Lane WM 1.3 and experience it for myself. So hopefully I'll be able to show that to you guys in the near future. Until then, you all take care. I'm Professor Kagan. Professor, and you go only.